Karen, can you believe we're at part three of this great conversation with Leanne? Well, of course we are, and we <laughs> should be at part five because when we get together, we <laughs> we could just talk, talk, talk. So you so did cover cool. a fraction of, you know. We did. That's okay. We'll do so many more in the future. But this, I, I think the third and final part of this episode is so awesome because it really does take you all the way through the whole journey of how, you know, we were lucky enough to know Leanne as our friend. Yeah. Um, and a lot of y'all get to know her as your friend now too, because she is that person. She's just that, what you see is what you get, but it's really great to know this evolution. And she tells the story so beautifully because we had front row seats and, yes. um, it's just such a great, honest, and what Leanne has made a business out of and is always will be is authentic. Yes, and how things, you know, how life unfolds. And if you step into that moment, you know, life can continue to offer up things that keep you moving in the right direction when you are on your path. Amen. And and what you said, and we all agree, you just got to lean into when you know something's a God thing. Yeah, and that's right. There's a whole lot of good, good, goodness in the God thing in here. So without further ado, y'all, please listen, rate, subscribe, share this episode with somebody that you know needs it. Because let me tell you something, there's so much inspiration in here. Share it because I know I needed to hear it and I knew the story. So. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> me too. Right? <laughs> so without further ado, this is part three of our episode with our dear friend, amazing human and all around Epic comedian, Leanne Morgan. Morgan. You gotta be just who you are. You gotta be just who you are. Don't let them sway you. No one can change you. You gotta be just who you are. Yes, there's another good one, Kay. I, like I said, I was, you know, two headshots. And I, you know, when Trish came along, we, I mean, I didn't, I mean, you were probably investing more in yourself, Karen, but when Trish was always doing her website and all that kind of stuff, and I remember saying to Chuck, I need a website. He's like, you don't need a website. <laughs> but I just didn't, I didn't know how to do all of that. And then when I said that it was really hard for me to take that money, because it was a lot of money for me at the time, to, to give these boys, those young boys at Honest Fox, and I, and I thought, I'm going to give it three months because it was so much money for me at the time. I thought, I'm going to give it three months and I'm going to I'm gonna take this chance. If it doesn't happen, that's God's way. I'm fine. But I got to give it this one more thing. And I and I, it is. It's important to invest in yourself. And, and I also think... I remember that, you calling me, Leanne, and saying, I will not forget that. It was in the middle of the pandemic. And you called me and said... Because you had worked your butt off. Then we had the pandemic. And you're like, this tour is never going to happen. I was like, that's not the case. Like, <laughs> you were like, it's not going to happen. But you said to me, you need to go invest in you. And I was, I felt, I felt like because I hadn't been on stage that, that and that, which is crazy because no one was. It was the pandemic. But, you know, it's, it's imposter syndrome and the story you tell yourself. And that's why I think this is really important. You called me and you said, here are the boys. You gave me their information. And I was so scared to invest in myself because I was at this like, what's that going to matter? And I think it's such a powerful thing to really drive home to people that, and it wasn't, it wasn't because I didn't think I, I didn't have anything to say. It was this weird moment of like, that felt like all the money in the world in the pandemic when we didn't know if we were going to work again. And like Leanne said, we sat in different seats. At that time, I'd just gone through a divorce, and I thought, this is all the money I have in the whole wide world. I thought, oh, my gosh, I have. It's like you felt like Jack and the Beanstalk, and you were blowing it on magic beans. That's what it felt like at that moment. But I remember you calling me and saying, you need to do this. And I was, I did not have that belief in myself. And I loved that you were like, you do what's wrong with you. Like it was the first time you'd ever, and I mommed me is not the word. Cause you've never, you're one of my dearest favorite humans. You've never mommed me, but you were very like, do it. And I was so scared. I probably just converted. I was so scared <laughs> that I was like, oh, I can't do this. And I think back now of that was such a powerful lesson because you were always like, invest, like do it. it. Who knows, but you can do it. And that to me was, Karen's right. You really were like, you've got to do it. And it doesn't matter how many damn websites you build or how many times you take a photo. If ain't nobody seeing them, it ain't going to matter. So, well, and, and the thing too is, 
and to me, this was a God thing. Leanne had done that dry bar special. Oh, and, yeah. And hopefully, I, I won't say something I shouldn't. If we, if I do, we'll cut it out. <laughs> but um, she had done a dry bar special, and they actually overpaid her by accident. And as she said before, uh, she would take the money that she earned, and she'd buy kids shoes, she'd buy uniforms, she'd buy sure. things they needed. Kept the lots on, but, yeah. But even though they overpaid her some on that uh, on that first check, they she kept it, and they just took it out of the future payouts. But that extra money she got on that mistake, which no. I think was a god thing, god thing, yeah. Gave her the money the path, to the leave for that, to go mm-hmm. do it, it to, to invest in herself without having to go to some other job or to have to ask Chuck for That's it right. or anything like that. It gave her that. And I think that was a God thing. And That was a God and thing. She, yeah. And so that's how she had the ability to hire them. And, uh, you know, it's just when the parts move together – and when everything and, lines up, that's right. That's right. And I just and think, I think it's important to say yes. Like, why not? What you what are you going to lose? What you got to you lose? Don't? Yeah, if you don't. And the, and this has been a me calling this next tour, just getting started tour. I feel like I'm just getting started at 58, and I do feel like that women feel inspired. They're like, look at what is happening in the land at 58 years old. And yeah. I'm, it's so hard for me, like the being around Reese Witherspoon and all these entrepreneurs that are in their forties, I think, oh, I'm so much older and all and all that. And age is really, we put that on ourselves. That That's is right. nothing to do with anything. Unless That's I was right. going to go in Playboy and I'm not. So <laughs> that really, we put that on ourselves. And I feel like I'm wiser than I've ever been. I think I'm. I don't know if I'm funnier than I've ever been, but I'm more confident than I've ever been. You to are. You're so funny. Yes. Funny. Yeah. I think you've, I don't want to use the word grown into your own because that sounds crazy. You've always been you, but I think there's this really sweet uh, comfort, but like you, you now understand your worth. That's in the seats I sit in. Like you've always been this valuable to your friends, to your family, to everybody else and it's now you I've I feel like I don't know if that's true you tell us but I, it's like you now understand the value of your worth where we've all always seen it and now you're like I I see it and, and I can't say that I mean you've always been so so funny so I don't know if you're funnier than you've ever been but what you are just from you know the level of confidence the so many so many shows you've done over i mean over the last few years is unbelievable and you own the stage more i don't know that you're funnier but you own the stage more and which also milks laughs because you've always had looks and expressions and things that 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 got further laughs than just a joke but now you take the time you own the stage and you have the audience in the palm of your hand. So that's, I think, the difference. But you and your material has always been hilarious. Oh, God, yeah. That's why, I was, that's why I'm asking you, do you feel like there's a worth for you, Leanne? Do you feel like you have that now ownership of what we kind of, we all knew, but that you now are taking that ownership of, of like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I've earned it. This is I'm this good is at this, what yeah. I'm, I'm good at this because you've always <laughs> had this level of just magic yeah, well, I, there are times I still think, like when I was at Tom Brady's Roast, when things like that happen to me, I'm at Netflix as a joke festival, and and I, you know, I'm walking up to Dave Chappelle, and or I'm at, you know, Ted Sarandis's house, and John Mulaney, you know, walks up to me, or Judd Apatow, there's, I still, you know, I'm a little like, oh, I'm, what am I doing here? But then I, then I'll have little flashes where I think, okay, I belong here. I belong here. I, my Netflix special has been successful. I, you know, I've earned the number, yeah. You've the done the time. There. The numbers are there, you know, and, and I think, okay, I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be at the table, but there's always a little something that'll come back, creep in and, and go, well, you know, I, I am older than everybody, which I'm really not. And when I think about it, I, I think about Bill Burr, Dave Chappelle, yeah. Yeah. all these, Cat Williams, all these people are in their fifties. 
Yeah. Jim Benson, you know, I mean. Seinfeld, and, for corn sakes. Knock it somebody off. Somebody said to me the other day, they go, uh, I can't remember who because I talked to so many people, but they're like, you know, really, it takes that long to get to be that good or to, at that level. And then I I think this, meeting those people, I realize now that if you're at that level, they respect, they've been very respectful of me, that John Mulaney did the whole Def Leppard bit for me, did the whole <laughs> Def Leppard, and, and was so, and, and I realize now that, I mean, I, that they must have respect for me to have gotten to this level and that, you know, when I talk to people like that, it's getting easier for me. I don't feel as intimidated. I'm still a little intimidated, but I think, oh, okay. They know I'm at this. I'm invited to this. I'm supposed to be here. But it's hard, you know, to, to receive that. But it's wonderful. I mean, wonderful. But then, but somebody was saying it takes that long to to master. Chuck Lorre said, Lee in. there is a, some book he always quotes about, it takes 10,000 hours to master something. And yeah. he said, you have clearly mastered it. The tipping point. That is those little breaks. Yeah. 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 You know, it, I took a different path than everybody with children, but I got in that time. And so, you yeah, know, I, I guess that's a constant thing that, you know, I'll just be intimidated by things. I'm I'm scared of things that I've never done before. That like doing a movie. Fortune Feimster looked at me and said, "There's a piece of tape, Lynn, that's called a mark. Get on it and stand <laughs> on it and say your line." I didn't even know that. So, so there's always things that I'm scared of and all that. But if I can get through it and learn it, then I feel more confident. But yeah, and I do still see myself. I still see myself. As a twenty-year-old it girl, I still think, oh, maybe I could be Cameron Diaz when she hit it big in her early twenties. And I think, what am I talking about? Because I'm still, you know, worried about my breast and my and my how I look in my clothes and all that. And I think nobody cares about that, Leanne. But I still see in my my in my head, oh, I'm nineteen or I'm twenty, and I've got to be pretty and I've got to be the, you know, Hollywood to me was being beautiful and young and thin and all that and I think I'm not going to be the Ed girl I'm not going to be in <laughs> the next Julia Roberts the redo of Pretty Woman in the bathtub and that's okay that's okay but you are the it girl you're just redefining the it girl how about that it girl that, that's a good way of looking at it because I do think I know I get deep but I do think women over 50 are having a moment Karen and I yes. say it all the time People oh, yeah. are we're having a moment, and more and more people are doing so well. And even in Hollywood, like they, that is, you think about, and Reese is 47, I think, but Jennifer She's 48. Is, we're, we're, we're 49. We're a year apart. I'll be 50 this oh, year, y'all. That's right, when she was shooting the movie. So, yeah, you're I'll right. I'll be 50, she, and I think she's a year but We're like, we're like you months will be apart. 50, Chris, or December. I know. Will you? I know, y'all. My birth, my birthday is one day left in the year, y'all. So I always say, so like basically all next year, I'll be 50. I was born December 30th. So yes, December 30th, I turn 50, Leanne, if you can wrap your brain around that. Oh my I gosh, know. my darling. Well, just get ready. It'll be the best decade of your life. Get ready. It's the I, best thing. You think it's not? Oh, I think of you as in... I think of you and Kay all the time saying it's going to be the greatest thing because you're, you, you, you won't care. You literally won't. You just won't care you in won't the best care way. About, yeah, you won't care yeah. about crap that you've cared about that meant nothing. That's nothing. what it is. Not that you don't care <laughs> about. Food. Right. You don't care about a bunch of mess that meant nothing. Anymore. Well, I think and that's why I'm so grateful for y'all because I realized I got to do a better part of a decade. With two, and I'll cry because I just, oh, when you have people that are like, you don't realize all the way they're giving you nuggets of like, girl, don't worry about all that. Like, don't worry about, and I would go, oh, I've got to worry about all that. Blah, blah, blah. And you both would be like, who cares? Let's go to Applebee's and get a sweet <laughs> potato fry. And I look back now and it's like this gorgeous, uh, training for lack of a better word for people that you love that are genuinely who they say they are both of you going that ain't gonna matter and I have this gorgeous calm rolling into 50 of like it ain't gonna matter because I've had two people that are killing it that I adore 
that were like, don't worry about all that. And I'd always have that in the back of my mind when I'd start getting stressed about the silly, stupid, just stupid stuff of the both of you going, it ain't going to matter. No, who cares? And it's given me this grace of going, ain't nobody going to care about that, Trish. Ain't nobody going to care. Because that's all you both said to me repeatedly. No matter there was stuff that we genuinely care about, but it's the little things that we would let eat us up that I'm grateful. And y'all taught me about my hormones as they were headed into a ditch. So that's another thing I'm so <laughs> grateful for. But, you know, one of the things I find funny on this tour is that uh, this demographic, you know, I, one of the reasons I think they've embraced Leanne so much and we laugh about it all the time. It's like, she's like, one of us got out. <laughs> and so, yes. yeah. So it, it's well, like, it's the hope it's the, Leanne's the beacon. Yeah, yeah. And uh she's, and she's made <laughs> and she's made women over fifty visible. A hundred percent. And not make everything that everybody goes through. And I I always my new stuff now, I talk about not wanting to let the cheese slide off the cracker and how long I've had to not let the cheese slide off the cracker. But there's some things that are just going to slide off the cracker. <laughs> like There are some things <laughs> yeah. that are going to slide off the cracker. And that is oh freaking K. And that's the beauty of our friendship and being time served with the both of you is how much it has been pre laid out for me that I wasn't going to be in a hole wearing a house coat and rocking and drinking warm yogurt. Like it was going to be, it was well, going to be okay. That, Trish, I need to tell you this. Jillian Dempsey has always, Patrick Dempsey's wife has been so good to me and Tess. Her mama started watching me during COVID and was shut in, you know, during COVID elderly. And Jillian Dempsey messaged me and said, you, my mom has really found joy in watching you. Can I send you my makeup line as a thank you? And I said, my daughter follows you and is a big fan of yours. She's a makeup artist. And so she said, I'm sending it to her too. So she sent all this makeup to us and we love it. And then we've stayed in contact over the time, over the years. And then I was working the Pantages at LA and she wanted to come. And then she said, only oh, Ann, that is the, uh, night that my twins are going to prom and I and they didn't tell me but they've signed me up to do everybody's makeup and so I was like I get it don't worry about it and I was there for a week and a half and so she said can you come to Malibu to have dinner and so Tess and I drove and and Patrick had they had to go somewhere internationally the next day for a race car you know he's in a race car uh, owner of a team and so he didn't come, and Tess said, we went with her, and she is stunning and precious. And she said, Tess goes, tell Patrick Dempsey that he was the love of my life from age 7 to 20. <laughs> she got so tickled. And, and, they, and Tess said, I went, to, I went pre-med because of him, didn't make it. But I went pre-med because of him. I thought I could do surgery. Anyway, she <laughs> sat and told us all this stuff. To, to She said, well, your mom, when you do, because Tess is going to do my makeup for my sitcom she said this is what you're going to need for this kind of light da, da, da. it was so wonderful and told Tess all these tips and what to do and then um I said you know I just feel like should I do anything like you know I went to a plastic surgeon I was gonna my breast have expired my breast implants and I and I just thought well maybe I need a little something under my and he told he said you need a full face left and all this stuff, and I didn't want a face left. And anyway, she goes, Lynn, Lynn, please, please, please be who you are. This is what everybody loves. She said, we're all out here trying to stay perfect. And, you know, she said I, she exercises and all the time. And she, I'm telling you, you talking about looking like a movie star or Jillian Dempsey, beautiful. But she said, we already have so much of this burden on us out here to be perfect and everything's got to be, please let us have you like you are. Please don't do anything. That's what it is. It's where everybody loves so much. Please don't 100%. get caught up in that mess because that means nothing. And, it, and we're all caught up in it and we've had to live it for years and nobody wants that. It's not real. And I thought that was so sweet of her. Yes. To, I, I, yes. I saw myself on the movie. I thought I need a chin implant. What happened to my chin? And then, and she goes, do not, please don't do anything. 
let us have this in you. Let us have this because that you need her. This is normal. That's right. And, you know, and, it, and it really, I thought that was very sweet and it was very helpful to me because I thought, did you right. receive it? Okay. it? And it's not about my, it's not about my size. It's not about my, you know, I do, I get, I'm human. I get worried about all that. And they, and that's, I guess the appeal and that, and people want, you know, they know that I'm going to tell them, you know, my bladder's weak and my pelvic floor, I mean, <laughs> PT and, you know, yeah, and, and people want to know that it's okay. It's okay. And I've got That's to remember, right. I've got to remember that I'm not Julia Roberts and pretty lady and pretty woman. You're the new it girl. When you do that cover, will you at least say, hey, I got reminded by my girlfriend, Trish, that I am the new it girl because you will do a spread that says the new it girl. I know it. I can't wait to see it in Vanity Fair. I'm speaking that into existence. Thank you. I would love to be in Vanity Fair. I always got that. You will. In the mail. You yeah. will. You will get it. You will be it. I can't wait to see the cover article. You'll be, I will read that story cover to cover. Thank you. I'll Thank you. Um, that I there. I hope. I hope I get to be in Vanity Fair. I got to be in Variety, and that was a shock. I was tickled over that. But it's who knows coming. what the world's coming down the pike? I really and truly mean this, though. If whatever happens, it has been so much more and sweeter and more wonderful than anything I ever dreamed of. So if when it does go down, and I don't, I'm not in demand. It'll. I think. I really think it'll be okay because this has been crazy. And so wonderful. Just so wonderful. And I think, don't you? Anything I could have ever dreamed of. And I dream big. I dream big. But It's this all was, on your terms. Well, and I just didn't, I never thought of that it would be a grandmama and her daughter and her granddaughter. I mean, that kind of stuff is just so sweet to hear. And it's, that that's the sweet part is that the how people are love on me. And Kate, you can tell her before I ever go out on stage. I mean, they're they're standing up, blowing me kisses before I ever say a word, and just like doing this at me. And I'm like doing that at them, and I'm like, what the? You know, at first it messed with my head, but now I'm. It's just they're just feel like they know me, and that I'm oh. speaking what they can about. Oh yeah. And there are times when um, when 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 I introduce you that you get a stand ovation when you walk out. You don't even get to your, you know, don't even wait till the end and they're on their feet. I mean, they are in love with you. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. And it makes me feel good that men or more and more men are coming. And I always want men to know that I'm in love with men. I have loved men since kindergarten and I'm flirty. I flirt, I, I, but I love men. I love men and I have zip. I love men that can do math. I love, I love those boys out there in a golf shirt, and I and I think they appreciate. You know, I just don't bash. You know, I no. need men. We need men. I needed Chuck Morgan, so I hope they know that because it, it that thrills me when they come. Because I and it and it's skewing a little younger now. There's a lot of young mamas coming, and yeah. That's why I think I'll, I'll probably re-record some of the early material about raising children because all that's evergreen. You know, everybody goes through that same. Somebody's oh, had yeah, a doo-doo sure. ball fall at the grocery store. Yes, and it's <laughs> and it's also very. Um, you need that. You need that reassurance that it's all going to work out from somebody you love and trust. And who better yeah. than you to tell somebody that? Yeah, and I know that these. I said it last night. These darling girls. That are in their twenties and thirties. It's no telling what they were going to have to go home and do to pay for those tickets. And I said, I'm so <laughs> thankful for y'all. I know, I know, because I had to do that. If I got to go anywhere, I thought, oh, Chuck's going to drink a beer, and I'm going to have to do it after a, after a Shania Twain concert. If you've been up all night, then you got to go home and get up with Ken's the next morning. You know, because they're like, it's a date night, and you know. Drink a couple of beers and start grabbing your breasts at a concert. <laughs> <laughs> we just went to Lionel Richie and Earth, Wind, and Fire, and um, and Chuck Morgan drank, and uh, I thought, oh God, what am I going to have to do? But I didn't. I didn't. I didn't have to. Chuck <laughs> tired and thank the Lord for that. We got to meet Philip Bailey. We got to meet Philip Bailey backstage. 
I didn't get to meet Lionel Richie, but I'm a big Earth, Wind, and Fire fan. And Philip Bailey's wife saw me on the road and screamed at me and um, got out of the car. It was crazy and said, we know all about you because you said during that Def Leppard video in Chattanooga, I said, I'm more, Chuck likes rock and roll. I'm more of an Earth, Wind, and Fire gal. And that got to them, and they became fans. It was just crazy. I love that. I know. So I got to meet little Philip Bailey, the, the lead singer. I tell you, yes, yes. You yes. You do the, power, the power of social media. I mean, you never know who's seeing what you put out. Amen I to know. That. It's crazy. I know. That's why everybody's got to work on that during social media. I know. But if anybody heard a takeaway, it's be who you are and invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm all, we're going to ask you some past questions, Leanne, and then let you beat bop out of here because I know this will end up being a three-part episode because it was just so gosh darn fun, and we love you, and we know that you both are working like crazy women with 13 jobs, so thank you for taking the time. Thank you. We love you. We love you. Uh, we're going to ask some funny ones real quick. Real quick, here's our fast questions. Uh, toilet paper, do you put it on the roll over or under? I put it on the roll. You mean you put it on the thing, right? Do you put it, do you put it pull for pull over, like pull it towards you or underneath, oh, pull down? I like it to be pulled toward me, but sometimes over. I'm tired and I put it on in the middle of the night because my family does not put a toilet paper <laughs> on the thing. And I I don't know it drives me and I'm not a good housekeeper and I've got a lot of flaws, but I can't stand it. So I'm the one that's always like walking, dripping, trying to get to the toilet paper to get new because nobody's gotten new, put it on the thing. I, but no, if I like it to come toward me, but it doesn't always happen if I'm pissed. Oh, I love you so much. I Most swear. Um, I feel the same way that I'm always changing a toilet paper roll. Sometimes I'll be in a public restroom and have to change the toilet paper. And I'm like, uh, does anybody else ever do this? <laughs> I've done it in green rooms where I'm like, really? Yeah. You couldn't have started with a fresh roll? <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, if you were a professional athlete, Leanne, what would your walk-up song be? You're a baseball player and you're coming to bat. Because I know they're different than comedy walk-up songs. That's why I thought I'd ask you. Mm, I, the first thing that comes to my mind would have to be... Um, I would want I'm Every Woman because that's my kind of my theme song now. But what about Mother from Danzig? Oh, oh that is uh, that is good. And I tell you we where I got that. Point. Well, I tell you where I got that, Tony Vitello, who is the University of Tennessee's coach, who have you not Googled him, Trish? Google him. You talking about a beauty. He is our movie star, and they are doing so well, and they're going to Omaha. They're in the final squirrel series. Okay, hold on. I'm putting him up right now. Hold on. He oh, is stunning. And nobody can oh. get the breath around. I know. And that's his walk-up song. So that would be my walk-up song. <laughs> oh, my. St uh, it is unbiblical, the thoughts you have. What is he, 12? What, how old is this? Oh, He played no, for the okay. University of Arkansas, I think. And he's probably in his 40s, I'd say. 40s, yeah. yeah. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit a better. Bachelor. I thought I was having... He is he's, a bachelor, and I think he's a player. I but can he, see why. he talked about a beauty. Maggie has met him, and they locked eyes, and she said, I've never, I mean, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. He, he's really pretty. Pretty. Wowzers. Okay. And, he's a, and he, like, gets in there and fusses and yells, and everybody gets, they they go, "He's you're about to be Tony Bede. Tony Patello because he, he's a bad mama jam and he gets mad and gets up in people's faces, but it's cute. And I love that you went with his that song. That's fantastic. Mother dancing. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a that was a curveball I wasn't expecting, and I'm here for it. I love everything about that. And uh Kay, do you have one before we have uh, any more quick questions? What what uh, what podcast or book or anything are you listening to right now, Leanne? Or do you even have time? Or are you just trying to work on getting your own stuff out? Or do you have time to listen to your podcast? I do listen to a podcast, and I tell you all the time. And Trish, you know her. I get on a plane and I download the uh, the latest episode of Heather McDonald, Juicy Scoop. Juicy Scoop. I'm yes. Feeling 
she is so funny to me. And I and I've told her, I go, I got to be on it one time, but I said, Heather, it's just something fun. She just goes over like what's going on in the news, what's going over. And she's got a really good take on things. She's got a lot of sense. And she I, she is not one of these people that ask a bunch of stupid questions that you really don't want to know about. She <laughs> goes through and knows, like, for instance, Kanye West and his new wife, and that she's always wearing those stockings and ha- doesn't have on yeah, the bra. I'm very confused by that. Heather McDonald will say they were spotted at so-and-so, and she talks about the things you would be asking. I can't even explain it. But I, And then she's got boys, and she talks about her kids all the time, and I think that we probably would have parented the same way. She's got a husband that I, is probably like Chuck Morgan. And um, I, Peter, but she yes. has a guest on there, and they, I don't know, I just, it's just a fun you know, you just have a ball laugh and laugh out loud. I do love a good medical podcast, and Karen and I listen to Dr. Mark Hyman, and I do like Andrew. Oh, Hood. yeah, Doctor's Pharmacy. So yeah, good. I yes. like the, all that about sleep I'm in reflux. I'm, you know, I'm we're out here, and it's hard, and we don't feel good, and we're always trying to figure out a better way to feel and the, with the supplements. I got you, girls. We'll so talk I love about all it. those kind of podcasts, but for just fun, Heather McDonald, Juicy Scoop. Plus, she always talks about all those housewives. And you know, Trish, I watch that mess. You love a housewife. I don't watch it anymore. (laughs) It's, But I loved it. And I know who all those people are. And she will talk about all that stuff. And and, and it's just funny to me. It's just funny. And it's probably a good break for you. Because you have to constantly. Yeah, they'll talk about hacks and you know, I love that, hacks. One of the writers on the hacks will be on there, and I and it's just and I've met him, Guy Branham, and he was he wrote on um or did something on our movie, but um it's just that kind of stuff she'll have on. I love. I love that. I know Heather's great. I've known Heather a long, long time. You need to listen long to time. one of those episodes. I'm telling you, and she'll go into you know she does impressions and she'll go into talking like Drew, Drew Barrymore. Barrymore. Oh, <laughs> and it, it is so funny. She knows how, she is a good impressionist. She really is. She really, mm-hmm. she did Chris Jenner pretty well too, which makes me tickled. I love that. And then I'm going to ask, even though you already really answered it, I'm going to ask you one quick one. What do you know so far for sure in life? Um, I know that, that time is a ticking. <laughs> time is a ticking. I'm 58 years old and I, I'm really realizing now, and I, I hate that you don't know this when you're in your 20s and 30s, but when we're talking about you turning 50, a bunch of crap doesn't matter. And you just don't know it when you're coming through lo- this life. But I think I'm getting to a stage where I really know what's important and what I really, what that, that how do I really want to live my life? What do I want to do? And what, and I really do want to help people. I find joy in in helping and and you know being there for my family and my friends and all that. That's what matters. When you know we're all gonna die, <laughs> and it's this and this life is a blade is a piece of a dew on a blade of grass. There's scripture to that, but I was raised Methodist and I don't know what it was, <laughs> but. It goes by in a flash, and I think you start thinking that way. Kay, you probably think that way, too. You get, you know, you get in your late 50s and early 60s, and you're like, you know, I mean, I hope I live to be 100, but what do I want, and what do, what do I care about? And I just, I care about being, pe- being around people who love me, who lift me up. I don't want to be around butthole people. I want to, and, and, you know, let's all pray for the butthole people, but I want to be with my family. <laughs> I want to be able to leave something, a legacy that I'm proud of, I'm not ashamed of, that I help somebody, that I, if God has blessed me with this, what do I do with it? And, you know, that that's what I know now, is that life is short. Live life to the fullest every day. And I tell Kay all the time, she'll go, I don't want to do that video. I go, who cares? Put it out there. It's going to be gone. What difference does it make? You know, just do it, do it. And I think I just shared a woman who was 105, just got her master's at Stanford. Stanford. 
I was crying Ooh. watching that. I know. Was that not look, how smart is she? And I and I just I realize this when I'm out here in these audiences and Karen and I see them all the time. These women that you know want to go back to school. I want to be a yoga teacher. I'm going to start a business. I'm going to do. Life is short. What? Who cares? Just do it. Do whatever you want to do, and you know, be around fun, sweet people that love you and lift you up. And it really is. I and think root about for you, which is and root for something. you. It's what we've yeah. all done for each other. We've all been proud of each other's success, and and I think that's so important to have those people in your life. Yeah, that's so true. And, that, and Karen has always said this: just because somebody else is doing well doesn't mean that you can't, or that they're going to somehow that affects you. That has nothing to do with you. All what is that that you say? The boats, um, high tides raise all ships. <laughs> Trish says high tides raise all ships. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and it's true. You're no, no, there's nothing that God's going to give you, Leanne or Karen, that he can't. I always say, God, do what you do for me, what you do for others, do for me and more. Because it's going to be what's on my heart isn't what's on Leanne's heart, isn't what's on Karen's heart. And there's room for everybody. That's why I try to, t there's not some scarcity thing. Like there's genuinely room for everybody. And if you authentically mean that with your whole person, I promise you it'll show up. I promise. It's when people get like, there's not enough. There's room. And that's what I know so far is I couldn't love the two of you more. And I'm grateful every day to have you in my life because you don't realize how hard it is to get really great female relationships, friendships in general, but really great female relationships where everybody roots for each other. And that's, that is a, something I never take for granted ever. So I love y'all. And we were all given, uh, you know, a unique fingerprint. So we, you know, just think of all the people in the world and no two fingerprints are alike. Nope. I mean, I think that shows you how we all are different and have our own authenticity. And you don't want to be like anybody else. You want to be yourself. And there's a place for each and every one of us, just like we have our own individuality. So what Leanne has doesn't make what I want less or what my potential is less or Trish's, right. uh, you know, what any of us have doesn't diminish us. It lifts us all. That's right. Yeah. And comparing right. yourself to other people and I've done it, comparing yourself to other people steals your joy. It steals your joy. 1000%. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think this, right. I think, I know Maggie lived with Karen when she was working for Make-A-Wish doing an internship and, um, and I've always said, Trish, that if if Maggie was at Coachella and I said Coachella, I don't say things Coachella. right. Coachella, yeah. But um, <laughs> she was at Coachella and I said, she need, you need to get to Maggie right now. You would crawl on your knees on broken glass to get to her and help. And I think, you know, I know In that I can help y'all. And, and everybody, you know, stuff comes down the road. People get sick. People get in terrible accidents. Think, you know something may go wrong with your kids or your God forbid your husband or whatever, but you need people in your life that are going to be there. And I always say, will y'all speak to my, at my funeral? I think, and I, I've been planning my funeral for years because it's going to be a celebration. A celebration, Leanne, you know, I love a celebration of life. Yeah, Everybody's going to get their own candy bar, a, the big one, the Cadbury with fruit and nut in it. And there's gonna. I ask, I ask, um, and maybe even a diet coke. But I asked Brian Dorfman to speak at my funeral um, a couple of weeks ago, Karen, when we were at Judy's birthday party, and he went. He looked at Tess and he goes, "Is your mom sick?" And she went, "No, she's just planning her funeral." <laughs> she's been planning it for years. Yeah, I do. But it is. It's gonna be. A, but I know that y'all would do that, and I know what that you know. That I just think at my age. I start thinking about who is your real friend? Who really cares about you? That's Who's right. going to be a pallbearer at your funeral? I mean, that stuff happens. And I, and it's, and I, and I just, but it's normal to waste time on a bunch of people that, you know, through your life that didn't really have your back and all that. And that's normal. But I, I do think I've got a wonderful bunch of people around me now. And, uh, and I think that's important for people to know. I've said a bunch of stuff 
about what that's I know. What, I, that's what makes us. That's what makes us also great, though. I think that's the truth. I always said one of the nicest compliments y'all ever give me is that I would be your ultimate emergency contact, and I'm like, a lot of people don't want that title, and I'm like, oh, thank you so much. Because you know, if it is three in the morning, I will A, answer my phone, and B, you could say, body bag and a shovel, don't ask questions, or <laughs> bottle of wine, <laughs> bottle of wine and some chocolates, don't ask questions. And I'm like, drop a pen, honey, I'm on my way. Yeah, that's yes. right. And Trish is always like, I'm always like, if I'm in, if, if I'm in that situation, I, you know, we know, you know, you'd be there in a heartbeat working for your home, you'd know how to help us. <laughs> Yeah, and she would say, "Don't go to Walmart. Don't buy a shovel. Don't buy duct tape. <laughs> Just stay still where you are. Dump your history. That. I'll be right there. Yeah. Don't panic." And I tell my kids all the time. I think this is important. And I tell um, because Ch and Chuck Morgan's what was the one that told me. But he said, "You always go to people's weddings and funerals. That that you've got to be there for people." Even when you don't feel like it and you don't want to go and you don't, but that's when, when people remember and, but it's being there for somebody in their worst time and their best time. And that's, and that's the absolute all been that for me. Well, and we've, we've gone through parents' deaths, parents' strokes. Um, we've gone through losing pets together. We, I mean, oh. we've all been there for each other through the, you know, somebody getting bullied in middle school. <laughs> <laughs> we've somebody been off all carbs that. we've been yeah. through we've been through and being there I mean I can't tell you how many times I've had a life trauma on the road and uh Leanne's like pull over I'll drive because I've had to, and that's when you know it. when Leanne says pull over I'll drive that's having you back because I've had <laughs> because I've had to sort out life trauma on FaceTime driving down an interstate and Leanne's like don't worry and I'm bawling and literally having to get my act together and you think about all those deposits into somebody's life that you know for life you've got somebody because there's a shorthand that you can't undo right I mean really in the good and the bad and so it's seeing someone shine and also seeing somebody at their worst then turn around walk on a stage and shine and that's also I think a testament to I'll, I'll say all three of us where we've had to have some real crappy situations and y'all don't even know. I mean, not that we're, you know, Tammy Wynette, but we, we've had some crampy situations and we've turned around, walked out on the stage, been completely professional and authentic, and then come off a stage and, you know, emotionally eat a, a, a ham platter backstage because you're going through it. And, mm -hmm. and there's something to be said about that level of care for each other because we've, we've done that time. Mm -hmm. And that's what Leanne refers to as, you know, her Tina Turner, she's got a channel Tina, Tina Turner when, you know, she thinks she always says, doesn't matter what I'm going through. I just think Tina used to go out there after I quipped her and, Whip you know, her in a cocaine, and raped her in a cocaine rage. That's what I think about. I think, I mean, how many times have I had strep or, you know, been sick and, you, and, or, you know, somebody said something awful to you before you went up or what, or a child's hurting or whatever. You got to get up That's there right. and the show must go on. Yeah. It's, it's the power. It's the power of lifting each other up. And that's these two women right here. I have will happily always have your back, watch you shine. And what I know so far <laughs> is that we're just at the beginning, all three of us, but definitely these two. So I love y'all so very much. Well, I love you and I love my little mm -hmm. Kay. We love you, little Kay. Oh, and I love y'all. And this has been so fun. And thank you, Liam, for taking the time. I know you got to get ready for your show tonight. Yes, Lord God, well, take I'm a comedy nap. I'm tickled I could do it, y'all. I'm glad I brought a, a top that had a cute color. That is your pop color. That is your yes, pop it color. is. <laughs> All right. Bye, honey. Love y'all. Bye. 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 Bye.